Hi there. Am I too short? Can you guys hear me? Yes. <laughs> My mom is like, you are too short, yes. <laughs> um, well, it's so nice to be here. And thank you so much to uh, the bookstore for having us and to Deanna for organizing the tree reading. It's really lovely. Uh, not none the least because it gives me the chance to uh, visit home. I'm from Wakefield, which is not far from here, so it's a nice opportunity for me. Um, okay, so I'm going to read a bit from the book uh, and also some new things in a confusing manner, which hopefully will make sense as it happens. Uh, Um, so I think you guys probably know what a villanelle is. Uh, if you are familiar with Dylan Thomas's Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, uh, then you do. Um, this is a villanelle in mistranslation. It's called Vilna Villanelle. A van, verily, une livraison. L'avenir arrived d'ailleurs, a day avowed comely. Lueur d'avril bespoke, bespilled, sa brille. L'imprévu s'avance impervious, appears apace, s'est envolé. A novice driver, évidemment. One virage rapide, and all bouleversé. An avalanche of navel oranges devant la fruiterie. A future in delivery, vraiment. Moreover, this arrival, le camion, la journée, Grand événement for the vagrants pocketing oranges à volonté, poursuivi by the vainglorious vendor à petit avail. Ainsi, unforeseen advances, une apparition imperméable that vite blows away, une idée, maybe, of ivied over avenues à suivre, à sway with lila, novelistic verandas, racignal, lily of the valley. En accouchant l'espoir, uh, arriving d'ailleurs, a truck, a day, en vérité, a vaudeville on la rue Villeneuve, thrown oranges, orange lancé, flown oranges, orange volé, runnelling nuance d'après ceci, une proposition inattendue, ghost in a raincoat, échappé, abundance, rolling, une voix beloved d'agrumes, ravished by abeille, and attendant au feu, unbeknownst to driver, fruit man, sans abri, a van, verily, une livraison, l'avenir arrived d'ailleurs, a day imprévu s'avance impervious, appears apace, then envolé. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And now that you've started clapping after every poem, you realize you have to clap after all of them, or I'm going to know that that one was no good. Um, thank you. All the other poems are in English, but I thought I would just start with that one, because Ottawa is uh, such a bilingual city, so it's nice, uh, it's nice to play that up for folks sometimes. Um, I'm going to read a new one. Um, I've been in a bit of a thing of stealing titles from other things to use uh, for poems. So this is a title that I stole from a cover story in Cosmo. It's called Feel Happier in Nine Seconds. I learned the secret of serenity by waterboarding daffodils. My Buddha is landfill. My birthright choked from a bluebird's neck. It's ruthless, the pursuit of happiness. 18 seconds have elapsed. My happiness is twice your size, chained loosely to the lamppost. It strains relations as it grows. I got the facts at the knees of the stone-faced nursemaid who first held a rose to my nose and said, blow. Garbage, she said. Five new true loves every 45 seconds. I flog a sunbeam, harness a cloud. You should be feeling six times happier now. The world is your Kleenex. It's been a long 63 seconds in Ottawapiskat, but my happiness swells diamond mines, slobbers parasol knobs on the Rhine. I sweeten my cantaloupe with stolen breast milk. 
no slave songs, no plaintive lather of cascading effects. Peak joy is at nine times nine. Saddle up, dear. An asteroid of happiness is blasting through the atmosphere. Um, okay. I haven't read this one in a while. Um, this one requires a bad New York accent, so don't be mad at me. Um, I have a little series in here of um, poems that use voices from great American plays to animate construction sites, because I love construction sites, and I find them you know, kind of full of theatrical spectacle. Um, so this uh, is about a pile of chairs that I saw thrown out of a window when they were renovating a building, and it uh, is uh, after death of a salesman. Discarded chairs. So this is what falls out of the magician's sleeve around here. A construction site heap of willy lumens with the legs kicked off. Broken down old kids in duplicate, triplicate. Christ says hundreds of you. All the same sorry shape bent over sideways, down on one shoulder, face in the dirt. Backs pinned to the ground, open seats, one shiny. Looks like they're gonna fix this place up, huh? Poor chumps. You're a shelf full of size seven and a halfs when the world wears an eight. Don't look at me like that. Let me tell you something. It was a long road through the pineal glands of a barrel of monkeys to cogito ergo sum digging inside the cranium for something that glows. You don't got it. Don't tell me I can't eat the orange and throw the peel away. A man is not a piece of fruit, but listen, kids, all the straight back near misses in the world don't add up to a hit. You're not canyon leapers. You're a volley of badminton birds who fell just short of the net. I can't unpick you from your cells. To hell with it. That big jawed yellow bruiser Looks ready to rumble over here and mash you up. I gotta stay on his side of the orange netting. We're all flimsy enough as it is. Hey, chin up, fellas. They've won, but they still can't see that it hurts you. So long. Um, I meant to read a different poem, but I forgot to print it, and I printed it this one instead, so I guess I will read it. Um, a popinjay is a word for um, the sort of fake little bird that uh, you can practice archery on. Um, I think there are a number of other meanings, but I think that's the original meaning. It's sort of a medieval thing. Um, so this is from the perspective of a little fake bird that you try to hit with arrows. It is called popinjay. Shell flex in his soft boiled egg again and the prince regent's palatial rage jogs his winning arrow's aim. It wobbles past my ear and wings out to the continent, spearing the queenly hand of a gentleman, handcuffing to the bed his new world dream. A practiced jackdaw like me is a feather, feather duster effigy rigged to keep still. But when every swooning chickadee, speared and falling, sneers that I'm not the real thing, I leap and strain with my cherry in my beak. Get me a spade. I can dig the Greek who said, heart my heart so battered with misfortune. Ask who misses the lost collar in the dog park. Ask the much ignored crossing guard. I'd give the wishbone in my chest for a crack at being wished for. Zipped in this goddamn chicken suit, handing out flyers for chalet barbecue. Hit me, Cupid, with your withered baby's arm. Um, yeah, that works out, because this next one is called Our Baby. Um, okay. Our Baby. Does this seem is this fine? Yeah? Okay. I'm the father of symbolic logic. You're the mother of all hydroplanes. Our little Mr. Multiverse tiny and perfect like Joseph Gordon-Levitt, wraps around the block, a fire truck vibrating to the planet's ringtone. Schrodinger's womb, an empty tank on the hot wheels of our gene vehicle, a metal thermos that makes tea taste like zoodles. That lost in space sound as the air wheezes out. 
Daisy we do, Daisy we don't, Daisy who loves me with the face of mine enemy, the squash blossoms at an Arctic thaw convention's luncheon, one over a mare named Hilda Snowball. I'm the mother of all icebreakers. You're the grandfather clock of the bellowing hour. We're losing light. What about boats or kites or simply the extant marvels of the Doge's palace? Thought experiments to the whimsical tune of the scientific mood. Art irritating life. In the sweet clouds of drier exhaust. <laughs> Um, in the sweet clouds of drier exhaust, you see a heart-shaped check mark. I see a rival for your affection. The sixth mass extinction nibbles the next decade with a mini stapler's kitten teeth. Our baby holds up a vial on an island. Daisy, you're an apple with a pig in its mouth. Our suffering in your recessive baby blues. The milk truck pulls up disgorges my Dalmatian at last. Um. What was that weird noise? Do you know? It's uh, House of Targ next door. They're like a... Pierogies. Oh, <laughs> so that was the sound of pierogies? Like, Amazing. It's like a venue and they're practicing or something. <laughs> 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 Be like, hey, poetry's in the house right now. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so this is, uh, I don't know how many of you know about or own this uh, kitchen implement called the Of Glove. You guys know what I'm talking about? Um, so this is like a oven mitt, but it's got separated fingers, so it's like a glove, so the smart people in the marketing department thought they should call it the of glove, because it's like oven, but also glove. Um, I saw an infomercial for this thing, and I just thought the name was so ridiculous, I needed to use it. Um, so this is called Mornings with the of glove. Encased in the new five-fingered Nomex shield, Recently lost to the space race and run aground in the suburbs, I stand before the mirror and soothe my flyaway hair with the ohm comb. In the kitchen, I reify a slice of toast with am jam, watch from the window as the neighborhood id kid takes one giant leap and clears the fence. His parents were like everyone, swept up in the as fuss advancing the species faster than the Russians. Hurrying to make their own clone and send it out there, the latest ape shape clomping around the garden, barefaced as a dartboard. Back then, I too felt the night ignite with passion. For a few giddy years, there were fumblings, scaldings, dropped casseroles, but now I've got a grip. Five times stronger than steel, look what we can do, I remind myself and dump my coffee dregs down the ink sink, that fathomless black hole. Heave my Kevlar coat off the rack and leave for irk work before the aught rot sets in. Down the stairs, on the once and future side of the ore door, I see the neighbor girls have abandoned the nameless secret they were building. Instead, set up a lawn salon in their front yard one girl transforming the other with eye dye, her hatchling boyfriend watching from the U-Pew. I think the rocket ship wreckage might still be on fire. That, or maybe there are hot coals where I'm walking. Yes, a crack, a crater, and then a glimpse of the hissing, ur face surface, the faith test, the scorcher. But my moon boots are the real thing, NASA cast-offs. Lately, nothing can touch me. I see the kid again. He's climbed to the top of the battleship jungle gym across the way in the Ark Park, surveys the monkey bars like an odd god debating flood. The swings are at autumn bottom. It's a long countdown to next liftoff. I fish my keys from my pocket. Something's missing. Love, a hovercraft, 
something to take me 90 miles above I'm time into the tuneless, ever-blasting in it minute. I can thrust my hands straight into the fire, withstand 450 degrees of separation, nothing will ever be too far-fetched again. I bury any uncertainty in the utter clutter of the aisle file. Think about this later. Um, okay. So I got um, kind of interested in, <laughs> did you smack down out there? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got kind of interested in uh, logic and rhetoric and um, I was at um, the BAMP Center, uh, which is actually where I met Brecken Hancock, another amazing poet who is sitting here. Um, and uh, in the, the BAMP Center has like both sort of literary programming and it's a sort of convention center for businesses and people come to have conferences and things. And so sometimes you'll see um, tables with people's kind of corporate mottos or logos or slogans kind of sitting on them. And so there, while we were there, there was an earthquake preparedness group that came through. And uh, their motto was, plan to be ready. <laughs> um, which I just thought was so funny, because it's like, is that, is that the whole plan, just to be ready? It seems like those are kind of just the same thing, you know, if their whole plan is just readiness. I'm hoping there is more to it than this. Um, so this is called, uh, about circular logic, and it's called plan to be ready. My intern swings a lantern through the swamp. Bloodhounds on the track of the elusive mind map. In our boat, we nose over ghost orchids, cull lucid proofs from the glamorous scuzz. You could say, A, it is raining. B, it is evening. Therefore, night's towels monograms scuffed over. A mildewy fume. Let's act accordingly. I, for one, have been making a list of lists to make. I'm diagramming the alligators gliding before and after me. A Harvard logician sends me a message. The propositional sentence A arrow B bracket or A implies B bracket at least captures the same meaning as your imperative. But Facebook's code turns B bracket into a yellow slight smiley face in sunglasses. I know enough to know my slogan. Repeat mantra, mantra, as we slide through the reeds. But my intern and I were floating wide, harnessed to a tautology pulled taut as the world on a string, stick poking the stagnant fractions of the aftermath. Three over three, four over four, it is finally what it is, like that dreamboat HMS Tetragrammaton were propelled by godly logic. All-seeing walleyes haunt the waterline. Now before you say aft aglay, before our rafts capsized or even smaller, my proposition for you is not bracket P and not bracket P bracket bracket. Or to put it another way, what difference does it make whether it's Q loves P or P loves Q etched in the permafrost defining our circular era for the air raids. But it's too late. I see you'll never grasp what I'm not about to say. Just follow my intern back to dry land. Ouroboros, please show our visitors the way out. Uh, right. Um. So I just have three more for you guys. Um, this one, I uh, have many uncles, uh, too many uncles, you <coughs> might almost say. Um, and uh, my uncles really love to tell jokes, so I kind of grew up in an environment where people are always telling jokes that are probably not all of them appropriate for children the age that I was when I first heard the joke that this poem is based on. Um, so. Uh, it's not the most politically correct joke, uh, and I did not make it up myself. <laughs> Please don't be offended. Um, this is called Joke. So there's this beautiful paraplegic girl sitting in a wheelchair by the sea. My uncles rolled her there, parading past the orange you glad julep stand where the knock-knock schmoes hawk bananas rake flat the ashtray sand. 
I've never been hugged, she recites. Play our piano, a dusty tinkle in the throat. First pass, but the porpoises, those smooth bastards, are already stifling their snorting in the spray. Uncle Sid, who cleaned up at last week's sunburn sweepstakes, wearing a clown nose instead of a Gilligan's hat, leans in to his brother, murmurs, listen, Charlie, the one-liner is not where the money is. Remember, ha-ha makes has, C-O-D. Harry nods. He's tops in the desert's laissez-faire pyramid scheme. It's all in the timing, he agrees. Advances the sheet to chorus, tears, cranks her up a notch. Never been kissed, the paraplegic girl plinks out. That's okay, I can fix that, he winks, and a gull shit bombs her immobile knee. The punchlines assail on the horizon, but those in the know are halfway to the bank already. Even the scuba divers splutter and surface, slapping their knees. I'll tell you, we have some fun. Which is not to say that one or two of the uncles didn't, you know, while drag racing her over the dunes. I'm the first to admit the uncles are some seriously sketchy dudes, the kind that pay for a hooker for their son's 14th birthday. Third wife's a charm, they wink and say, but they'll take care of her, set her up in business. Salon chair, bubble dryer, who needs legs? Or maybe just a dark room with the curtains pulled, an eye shade filched on the last flight to Miami. Tylenol and pink tissues, sea scales from the upstairs brass, a mini bar full of coke and ice. Could be worse, right? Three times, and we're waiting for the last line to bring back the last laugh, last seen in gray sweatpants making a break for Avenue to Park. I've never been, she clatters when prompted. Shoots me a look that says, check under the bed when I'm gone. There's enough save to get you out of this bullshit. And I did. So you'll understand what I mean when, one fine day, as we saunter the beach, the sun sweating, the waves wheezing out like a whoopee cushion, I lift you up in my arms and I throw you in the ocean. The day you can't take a joke is the day I say to you, now my friend, now you're fucked. Um, okay. That's also the only one I'll read with swearing, sorry. Um, okay. Uh, this is a poem I wrote after visiting a friend's parents' house who had um, one of those houses that's just like crammed, every possible surface is crammed with little knickknacks and doohickeys and little figurines and things. Um, and I kind of realized that just about every word in the English language rhymes with either knick or knack. So this is called knickknack. <laughs> Mismatch. Gimcrack gewgaws, culled from every claptrap souk in the Near East. The bric-a-brac cabinet, stacked with lowly crackerjack prizes. That plastic horse you loved, remember? Still ticking fitfully on its rockers. Tacky, you call it now. Set of zodiac coasters, relics from my beatnik days. Wedding pictures, your father and I sunstruck at the Acropolis intoxicated with lyric and metaxa, miraculous to ourselves. Since you were a finicky six-year-old, picking the peas out of the moussaka I fixed you, and manufacturing straight lines, the first flickers of an exacting aesthetic, you've always been quick to be critical. And it's true that the living room's a traffic accident, tipped stacks of classic paperbacks, Pasternak and Cynthia Ozick, bivouacked under the ottoman, discussing the Russian doll's real politic, attack from within. Her eyes black lacquer opacity, recalling the stricken buildings, flak helmets still stashed in the attic, derelict factories. A music box, coronation snow globe, pine cones from a picnic in Chilliwack. You forget how you once used Bix pickle jars to house the springing forlorn crickets, the supplicant brown walking sticks losing their purchase on the frictionless sides. I turned a blind eye, though your collections were living. You wouldn't remember the old house on Chemin Victoire, a shack, really, 
but the train tracks were thick with chicory, blackberries. You and your brother settled with snacks and comics. We'd back up the Buick, load up the kayaks, and drive out to Lac Saint-Jacques, passing Nicolas Levac on his acreage, yelling, Tabernac! Oh, damn, there is another swear word, sorry. Um, at his soporific tractor and kicking it, or humming Pockle Bell. Watercolor of a shepherd boy tumbling lovesick from a haystack, cowlick must, St. Patrick's cross, a cactus at the milkmaid's neck. Artifact of an unironic age, hackneyed, no doubt. Admit it, you think I'm all wax and no wick, acquisitive, should rather live simple, be crawling across the outback or the Arctic, gasping, alas, poor Yorick. But a long time ago, my great uncle Zenik heard me practicing a polka on my accordion. He beckoned me close, licked his cracked lips, and whispered, I'll tell you my secret. Never get too old for coin tricks, magic. Look, your ear is packed with nickels. The card you've picked is joy. What he'd lost could fill houses. I've saved what I can. It's how I remember. The clip-clopping stink of traveling on camelback, homesickness, the symphonic sweep of hurricanes, jacaranda trees, an atavistic redolence of capsicum, black licorice, the New Brunswick mud, all racing down the sandy funnel of the world. This is my record, not an ascetic scroll of Gnostic abstraction, but ticklish racks of the real. Make no mistake, the ship is the message, the lock on time's spill. A clipper, rigged to last in bottles, rounded embrace, that someday, Jane, you'll keep for my sake. <laughs> um, and then I... <laughs> What's happening? Nothing, nothing. Okay, you can tell me after. <laughs> Um, so I've just got one more piece. Uh, thank you all so much for coming out and for listening. It was really lovely to hear all the open mic and Mark as well. Um, this is another one uh, where I've taken the title from another a title of something else. So uh, this is um, the title of a sort of alternative physics paper written in the 60s. Uh, it's called Higher Intelligence is Us in the Future. It all happened only 25 daughters from here, when a brilliant physicist's murdered girlfriend sat up and said, I've got it. Our planet is the lost balloon mourned by the birthday boy in the moon. Her lungs were full of superfluid helium. She talked like a chipmunk. You and I have a future coma patient's brain waves, a white leather six-piece luggage set of which I'll die possessed. Since we first flubbed naming shapes, we've floated like shades at the back of the classroom. An enslaved monk on a Thai shrimp boat wants me to say that in Pig Latin and are roughly the same. Also, ude, otne, etle, emde, ilke, ime. Some CIA lingo is totally impregnable like that 70s psychokinetic spying program called ESP Enage. The internet is a box in San Francisco. Whales hit their heads on our workflow. Was that my idea? Or a seed dropped through the pocket watch of destiny's farmhand? A medievalist studying the 27th century felt a pang, a frisson, like tassels stroking a handmaiden or dog. We dropped our pencils in lockstep. By then, a crow playing chicken with a window had more direction than us. Alone in the bleachers, cheering the grass and the vast time-like curve of your ass, the whole football field lit up. It was the size of a football field and glowing. We dozed as if in a ski lift, our Mary Janes black over swelling hills of May, a green blur like the alien who gave me these pancakes. Thanks, so many thanks are due to the online sleep community whose tireless efforts have cracked the combination 
to a lucid grayness, awaiting us all the transformative joys of the white noise palette. Rain on car roof, rain under a bridge on a boat, night car drive from Munich to Ingolstadt during rain, once we've learned to relax. Thank you.